everyone a wholehearted warm warm welcome to all of you who are joining today's second part of the online workshop soul and spirit and um, if you haven't seen the if you haven't attended the first workshop do not worry, there is uh, going to be a recording that you are going to um, reach you, that is going to reach you and you can watch it later on. Um, and today we're gathered to continue the threads of soul and spirit to spiral up and down. We are going to continue what we've started yesterday. Uh, and yet uh, we're going to dive deeper and maybe uh, fly higher at the same time, uh, always accessing innate resources. It's a wonderful gift to have you all here with us today. Thank you for joining. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being inspired and curious and let the uh, energies of soul and spirit reach you today once more mm. welcome wholeheartedly and delightfully also from my side and let us enter the realm of the sacred and perhaps you have close to you a candle and perhaps you have something to lit the candle with and let's do this more or less simultaneously as a way to cross the threshold, to cross from this world, the middle world of practicalities into these two hours and a half where actually it's a time that is not measured by minutes, but is measured by, I don't know, breaths, feelings, the way we are touched, the way we receive and let us be inspired by this flame, this irresistible flame that burns, destroys, as well as reunites and uh, rebirths. It's all in this little flame, little huge flame that perhaps is also somewhere in your heart, in your core. Ah, oh, thank you, fire, for witnessing us. And perhaps you have also some sage or Palo Santo or any kind of uh, herbs that can be burnt and their scent can bless our space, can ripple and can remind us about spirit that is always so present and embracing us. Hmm. 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 So let us land in an even more generous way um, and be in the company of a poem to continue with a poem. And this one, it's a poem that is called, It's Okay If You Are Scared. It's okay if you are scared. What a name, huh? It's okay if you are scared by Shellan Harkin. And it goes like this. Ready for it? Ready? Open the open hearts, closed eyes, so that you can see better that what is transmitted through this poetry. It's okay if you are scared when you're opening. It's okay if you are scared when you're opening the seed. She was scared too. Do you think the coal wanted to become a diamond? Huh. 
She was scared out of her weeds of change. It took her 10,000 years to even be able to pray for it. And what about our favorite cliche, the caterpillar? You must have heard his resistance as some bigger force unwelcomely impelled it to eat its own form while disclosing nothing of those secret wings. The acorn was so stodgy, the far right of the plant kingdom 100% closed in by the hard walls of his beliefs. My, oh my, did he resist becoming the regal, generous oak. The only thing different in us from them is we have an even more stubborn resistance. But ultimately, we are impelled by the same irresistible force to completely self-destruct into a new and improved yet to be discovered marvel. Do your best to allow this. You too were made for wings. It's too beautiful not to read it again. I'm sorry. It's quite long, but I will I will read it again. It's okay. It's okay to be scared. It's okay if you're scared when you're opening. The seed, she was scared too. Do you think the coal wanted to become a diamond? Ha! She was scared of her weeds of change. It took her 10,000 years to even be able to pray for it. And what about our favorite cliche, the caterpillar? You must have heard his resistance as some bigger force unwelcomely impelled it to eat its own form while disclosing nothing of those secret wings. The acorn, the acorn was so stodgy, the far right of the plant kingdom 100% closed in by the hard walls of his beliefs. Oh my, my, did he resist becoming the regal generous oak. The only thing different in us from them is we have an even more stubborn resistance, but ultimately we are impelled by the same irresistible force to completely self-destruct into a new and improved yet to be discovered marvel. Do your best to allow this you, too, were made for wings. Do your best to allow this, this new and improved yet to be discovered marvel. You, too, were made for wings. Ah, beauty inside your being, hopefully right now, as the ripples of this poem are reaching you. Mm. Mm. just stay with the poem don't you worry about finding this poem because this poem and other poems the ones of yesterday and the ones of today will reach you will reach you soon enough and now stay with the ripples the gravity that this invitation, because I feel like this is a poem, is an invitation poem, is bringing. And maybe, and maybe we can also close our eyes for a moment as I'm going to smoothly and gently for just a few seconds, well, maybe minutes, I will guide you through, through a, a short deep imagination journey and probably we will have some music accompanying us 
that you will hear it as you are shifting into a comfortable position ready to be in an intimate encounter with yourself and with the darkness that lives inside so if you haven't already closed your eyes maybe smoothly gently you can shift into closing your eyes being in this place of marvel and not choosing but waiting inviting being surprised by what is hidden and as you're sitting there in your place take a few breaths breathe the air breathe and let the spirit in let it in traveling your body finding all the places all the hidden places of your body where spirit is needed and with every breath arrive even more fully in your own seat in your own black image in the sensation that you're feeling right now and making yourself available opening yourself into the darkness allowing the gravity to pull you down letting yourself be taken by earth's embrace pulling you down feeling perhaps your own very roots penetrating penetrating earth with its branches and let yourself be delighted by this travel down is it a succulent soil humid warm ready to receive you allow your body to be taken consumed devoured by the earth's body all the way all the way until you reach the core of the world the core of the earth the very heart and let the work of the heart do what needs to do and notice notice who is waiting there who what is waiting for you there into the heart of the world where you dissolve yourself to be
maybe someone something gets around the corner perhaps someone something is waiting for you in the back Patiently for the shape. Energy of someone that is perhaps something like a guide to soul, someone that knows the mysteries and the marvels of soul. Perhaps you even want to engage with this one. Being curious, noticing, letting it affect you, feel its quality, its presence, perhaps it's someone or something that you've encountered before or perhaps it's something, someone absolutely new perhaps this one is whispering something to you in words or in other form listen receive the, the message in your heart maybe in your body if there is something from your side that you want to whisper back maybe in the form of a promise or perhaps in the form of a question perhaps in the form of a deep longing whisper this whatever it is to this heart of the earth of the world knowing that soon you are invited to travel back having the possibility to return to this place wherever you have availability and a big enough curiosity so thanking this one for its presence for its whisper for hearing you for receiving you Finding your way back, spiraling up from the heart of the earth, perhaps bringing with you that something that was gifted, that 
piece of truth, perhaps. And finally, reaching the surface of Earth, feeling more into your human body. Maybe never losing really this connection with the dark terrains. And yet, now feeling into the breath. into the chest that is moving with every breath, inhale and exhale. And maybe even touching yourself, some parts of your body lightly in a way welcoming you back here in this virtual circle where soul and spirit are being explored and traveled through and fe felt. Timidly moving your eyelids and opening your eyes. Coming here, back, maybe even ready for further, further steps, further waves, further ripples of this short yet deep journey. So still being in touch with whatever was revealed for you, to you. Still being in touch, still keep that alive. And we're inviting you to shift your gaze towards your notebook. And there, perhaps in the form of a poem. Let this union, this spiral, this truth that was reached to be expressed in poetry in your notebooks. Whatever has enchanted you, whatever has allured you, whatever has made you, has scared you, from all the depths and all the highs and all the truths found in between. Yeah, and just go to your notebook and spend some time there. Let the words flow from your body into the pen, into the white sheet of paper. We're letting you some moments here with yourself and the poetry.
So here is one more minute of working and playing with words. One more minute here. So, you're invited to go back to the beginning of what you wrote. Go back and may perhaps take a few seconds of reading and acknowledging uh, the truths being captured there. Maybe as you do it, there is a, there is a particular verse that holds the biggest amount of essence. Maybe underline that. And next, we're inviting you, if you, if you feel cold, to perhaps uh, drop this line of poetry, your line of poetry, here in the chat, uh, knowing that mm, once you drop it, um, um, we can read it here and it will uh, be with your name here in the in the bigger circle in the wider circle uh, so yeah if if you feel cold we're inviting you to share here and this is a possibility of being witnessed this is a possibility of being mirrored um, yeah wow and just like we read poems of so many other poets, now we will read your poetry. You are the poets now. So yeah, just allowing for a few seconds. If there is um, for the few line for the for the uh, for the lines to be revealed here in the chat. Mm. 
Well, here is a poem by Lara Marie Ronhol that goes like this. I'm one with earth, perfectly organic. I am myself right here, right now. Mm. Ah, mm. aho, Lara Marie bring so much um, relief your poem at least on my body thank you and there's um, another poem mm -hmm. of Irene uh, Buraki curiosity mystery detachment I sit comfortably with it blue water I spit it and I float. Way. Mm, courageously vibrating inside. Mm, and here is um, one from poet Valentina. Death, mother of future life, particles of resting pieces. Mm. So I feel like I feel called to read it once more. So here it is once more. Death, mother of future life, particles of resting pieces. So much grace here, so much wisdom. Thank you, Valentina. Way. Mm. 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 And yet another one. This time the poetess is Lelde. Devil, myself, entering darkness and letting the darkness enter me. Devil, myself, entering darkness and letting the darkness enter me. Mm. Way, beauty, beauty, lovemaking. Mm. by Clara Sureda how can I be scared to lose who I think I am to become just who I am how can I be scared to lose who I think I am to become just who I am gorgeous gorgeous Dear one, yeah, how can I be scared in this quest? It's almost impossible. Thank you. Mm. And here's another poem by the poetess Helena Blankenstein. I am fed fully by the delicacy of your blue. No more mirages, no more pretending. I have been fertilized by the divine. I am fed fully by the delicacy of your blue. No more mirages, no more pretending. I have been fertilized by the divine. Oh, so much allowance, so much openness and availability to carry to, to to be a fertile flavor place where the divine is touching you me us thank you mm. such a feast of poetry i am just so delighted here is another poem from christopher Scared I was, terrified. It took me time to come. And here I am, still scared, since back then, the you within me. Scared I was, terrified. It took me time to come. And here I am, still scared, since back then, the you within me. What kind of union is this? 
who is the you and who is me? And what's the courage behind that fear? Beautiful, thank you, Christopher. It's wonderful. And here's the poem of Judith. I see its colors, the colors of Father's sky and deep sea, playful floating through me. But when we arrive at the heart, the heart gets so strong that we forget and just return when we belong. I see myself who is not me. Oof, there's a novelty here. There's a seeing deeply. There's a seeing beyond the forgetting. There's a returning. Thank you, Judith, for your poetry. Mm. A poetry that gives the thread to another poet, Mada Botu. I hope I pronounce it right. You shine even in your darkness, or perhaps especially there. Let me hold you, let me lift your body like a feather and offer you the wild comfort of witnessing you fully. You shine even in your darkness, or perhaps especially there. Let me hold you, let me lift your body like a feather and offer you the wild comfort of witnessing you fully. Ah, witnessing you fully. Witnessing the shininess in the darkness. Beautiful. Thank you deeply, madam. And here's the poem of Anastasia. Uh, Anastasia. Priyamvada. The little bug I've despised was my guide to the soil. Was my guide to the soul? Soil, soil of the soul. Soul, soul of the soil. How may I call you, you little guy? Busy, busy, and my busy mind falls into the trap. Busy, busy from the sound. Bzz. Not from the busy, busy life, time, and schedule. Before I've asked, you've told me. You can breathe everywhere. You can breathe everywhere. Ah. Ah, what a playful depth of soil and soul and breathing everywhere, allowing that to happen, following the guide where the true breathing is possible. Mm. Thank you, Anastasia. Beauty. <laughs> this one is by Emilia Zagrian. A stranger's car and my shadow are riding from the depths of the earth, almost defiant in his enthusiasm and taste for life. Where are you going? I asked. Wait and see, you love it there. So I looked back at my shadows, greeted him, and rose spiraling down back to heaven. Nothing but smoke, the purple light, guiding me home. A stranger's car and my shadows are riding from the depths of the earth, almost defiant in his enthusiasm and taste for life. Where are you going? I asked. Wait and see, you'll love it there. So I looked back at my shadows, greeted him and rose spiraling down back to heaven nothing but smoke the purple light guiding me home 
Wow, so wonderful. As if it is a dream, I have this sensation that this so uh, this poem is almost a dream uh, given uh, in the night nighttime. Uh, and that's also uh, where deep imagination comes, you know, from that nighttime, from the deep, uh, dark uh, part of our psyche. And I love this. I rose spiraling down back to heaven as if I'm going up, rising, but I'm spiraling down at the same time in this, in this quest to reach home. Home, home. Beautiful. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you. Mm, and we have another poem from Virginia Mano. Let yourself to be scared, and you will find yourself on the other side. Let yourself to be scared. And you will find yourself on the other side. Oof, what an invitation and a promise. Almost hearing like risk everything and you will be rewarded. We don't know what is on the other side. What is the other side? The other more frightening world. Oh, thank you, Virginia, for your contribution for your invitation into the scary lens of soul. By poet Giancarlo, I slow down, I become still, I'm aware of it. It's when the body is completely unmoved that something can move. It's when the body is completely unmoved that something can move. Something so subtle, the truth of our fabric. Mm, just so wonderful this. It's when the body is unmoved that something can move. As if you're witnessing the movement in the midst of the silence, in the midst of the stillness, that's where the truth is. The truth of our fabric. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Mm. Mm. And here's another poem from Mihai Yakab. My wings have been cut down slowly, consistently by a nail, nail clipper until the cuttings can no longer generate lift. Will I ever grow feathers again? My wings have been cut down slowly, consistently by a nail clipper until the cuttings can no longer generate lift. Will I ever grow feathers again? Mm, such a, a deep longing, a deep longing for feathers, for a possibility, for a life, for a marvel of life. And there's the memory of the wings. My wings have been cut down. There were once there, there's the remembrance that this one is made, is meant to have wings back. Keep on remembering and feasting into the question, will I ever, ever, ever grow feathers again? Mm. Thank you. Here's another poem by Lolo. Feel free to travel beyond the doubt. Feel free to move forward, determine your steps or don't. 
maybe just walk walk through your questions like if you were walking through fire thank you lolo for bringing this um metaphor that the questions are like fire and they're burning and they're cooking us questions that cannot go away feel free to feel the heat beneath your feet walking or just being feel the burning of the questions questions that are bringing us in a quest maybe they're bringing you in a quest in a search in a journey wonderful just keep keep doing that thank you deeply and here's another one perhaps the last one uh, by georgia karam karalambus georgia karalambus um dark image dark room this is what i have in front of me i accept it i welcome it i am here i am still here i'm alive it scares me this fear reminds me that i'm alive and i continue and i let the darkness consume me and I see a dark shadow that looks like a soul. My soul, what are you trying to tell me? I feel you. I feel them. I accept them and I wait for their revelation. I let go into the unknown. I let myself in fear. I let myself in hopes that I will be reborn. Mm. Mm, such a detailed instruction of the deep prayer of offering yourself as a feast with everything that is happening inside, acceptance, delight, fear. You are very close and very ready to be consumed, to be taken. It's a courting poem almost for me. Courting soul, enchanting, giving yourself in such a truthful way, in hopes, in fears, to be reborn. Be careful, you and others, what you're wishing for. Your wishes, well, your desires, your longings might come true. Mm. Thank you, Georgia, um, to you and to all the others that have shared and the ones that have witnessed and has, have not shared. Uh, and nevertheless, they have their own poem. Wow, what a delight we created here together. What is this? We could never, ever could have uh, Eleni and I planned for this, really. Wow. Well, I hope you're fed. And although we don't have, we haven't heard your voices yesterday and not even today, your voices were not heard, by you, but your existence, your living, your, your breathing through these images were heard. And yep, we are in the cauldron. Yep, we are here, still here just to quote the last poem. We are here, we are still here. Delight. I'm just delight also from my side, am echoing Sandra's words. What a beauty and what a courage to show up here um, with your words or with your presence. So um, let this poetry um, be your guide in this journey where you are. Let this poetry uh, be your um, ally. Uh, maybe it already encompasses the steps uh, that you might need to take. Maybe it shows the way already. Um, 
And maybe keep it somewhere close to you. Revisit it again and again. Uh, don't let it slip away. Whether you've shared it or no, uh, keep it close to your heart. Keep going back to that. Yeah, just uh, wow once more for this beauty revealed here. And with this, uh, you know, maybe with this astonishment, um, we may uh, move on. So hopefully you are ready for more. And I will share my screen in just a moment here. I will share my screen with you all. As we want to present you and to introduce you to uh, the model of another model of Bill Blotkin, um, which is called the Descent to Soul. And just for um, a little imagination uh, prompt, I will share with you just the, the image, the main image of this model. And you tell me if you see it. Yeah, okay, great. So yeah, it's more, it's more a drawing. It's more a metaphor, really. It's more um, an image than a chart. It's a, it's a canyon. We can imagine that is a canyon. We can even name it that is a soul canyon. And it's called the five phases of the descent to soul. So Eleni and I, we are going to, to speak about each of those phases, taking, the, taking them one by one, the preparation, the dissolution, soul encounter, metamorphosis, and enactment. And we will do that through poetry, well-known poetry, or through our own musing and poetry. Maybe even your poems are finding their place here in, in the Soul Canyon somewhere. Okay, so because I want to see you all, I will stop my share and I will we will return to the big circle, but just for you to have an image of the, of the canyon, I wanted to share this with you. Okay, so let's see, just uh, an overall kind of, feeling about what is this model? What is this model? Um, what what can, can it teach us and or show us? And maybe it's worth starting with, uh, with this, um, I don't know, maybe it's a truth or maybe it's a speculation. Uh, certainly it is Bill Plotkin's point of view that our, let's call it existential crisis, is primarily because we are disconnected. We humans, I mean, we are dis disconnected from nature, from both the inner nature and the outer nature, from both the natures, we are disconnected. So we have lost the deep belonging to our natural world and to our own very souls. And he believes that this is, this is kind of the, the challenge, the problem of the, the crisis, the, the human existential crisis, the developmental um, lostness in our psychological growth. Yeah. So deeply answering this existential crisis, this descent to soul is a complex process of initiation. It is a psycho-spiritual adventure that can last months or what am I saying? I think better to say is years. And to which not everybody reaches, 
and and you will see in detail why and how. So going through this canyon of soul can and will transform everything about us individually as well as collectively. It's it's a marvelous model that I um, I I love I adore I follow um, and I am forever surprised by because it's a it's a model it's in the making it's not a static thing it's it's growing as our development and our understanding of soul and spirit are growing as well so let's see maybe in other words uh, the journey of soul initiation ultimately is the way to personal revelation or visionary leadership the encounter with soul um, results in developing true adults not by merely having the age of an adult by but by true adults that are developmentally adults and and revolutionists and artists artists in the larger form of the world of the word because we are all artists of our own soul yeah i believe this model um helps humans to inhabit this ecological niche ecological niche ecological because uh, as humans, we are also part of nature and we have, have an ecological uh, existence. We belong as the trees and lakes and mountains and flowers. We are ecologically having a niche, a place of belonging, of true belonging. So it's a model that helps us find and hear and be found by our distinctive role that we are having on this earth is helping us, is supporting us follow that golden thread of, of our truth, our innate um, seed, the acorn that we are. Hmm. And most people have felt a really deep longing for their life to be to be a passionate adventure to be a meaningful contribution to the world many people have felt and are feeling this this call but few know or few are supported to make that become real to reach that yeah we are lacking mentors we are lacking adults and therefore, we are lacking elders that know the journey of soul initiation. We don't, we have plenty of old people, yep, yeah, but very few, very few elders that could usher us through this journey. So, yeah, here we are. We are here grabbing this opportunity to speak about soul and perhaps is beneficial hopefully for our own journey and for the ones that we are guiding and the ones that we are working with yeah it's a possibility this journey of soul initiation it's a possibility to live an extraordinary life extra ordinary and extraordinary life hmm. so shall we begin or continue better said let's uh, let's uh, dive into the the journey so as you remember there's the canyon and the first phase there on one side not on the other side, but on the first side, the side that we are born, there's the first phase that is called preparation. And uh, let me read you yet another poem that speaks a little bit about um, 
the flavor and what is the preparation about. And it's a poem by Rumi and it's called Wake Up, Wake Up. This night is gone, wake up, abandon, abandon, even your dear self, abandon. There is an idiot in our marketplace selling a precious soul. If you doubt my word, get up this moment and head for the market now. Don't listen to trickery. Don't listen to the witches. Don't wash blood with blood. First, turn yourself upside down. Empty yourself like a cup of wine. Then fill to the brim with the essence. A voice is descending from the heavens. A healer is coming. If you desire healing, let yourself fall ill. Let yourself fall ill. Wake up, wake up. Yeah. So, preparation. I think I will say, Bill Plucking has something like that. In another book, he says, this stage is the best stage. I would say this phase is the best phase to be in. And so are the others. <laughs> but this is kind of crucially important. If we are not passing this one, well, we are not we are not ready for the journey. So it's quite explanatory, right? I mean, preparation. We need to prepare. We need to prepare. We need to build the foundations of our ego to mature it into an awareness into a capacity that is able to hold the vision of the soul which is risky which is big which is grandiose otherwise ego will just freak out and the descent and the journey will not happen so it's quite quite crucial so here in the preparation phase we are invited and we are demanded, actually, not, not merely invited, but quite demanded to cultivate our innate human wholeness resources, especially maybe the parts of our psyche, the parts, the, the facets of our wholeness that feel most foreign or unexplored. That could be maybe the wild one in you. Maybe the mysterious one in you, maybe the innocent or the sage one in you, or the nurturing adult one, generating one of you. And it's it's not enough just to okay, I will I will keep a journal every day. That's wonderful. That but that's one of the practices. The practices of this deep cultivation of human wholeness are, are various and wide and complex. And especially from this eco-depth psychology, we are inviting you in conversation with nature because she knows nature. She knows. She is whole. She has resources. She knows how to use them. She's not shy, so we can learn. She is a teacher, a guide. So wholeness is uh, essential and necessary. Also, in order, if you desire healing, let yourself fall ill, as Rumi says. Healing practi practices here are also important, important, important. Facing the work that has to do maybe with our inner protectors. Maybe the protectors that are are protecting the, the little one in us, the vulnerable one in us. The protectors, the inner protectors, unless they are quite convinced that you are ready for such a grandiose journey, they will keep coming and they will keep uh, 
protecting you, protecting you too much of a protection and keeping you in your small story. That kind of protection, not a nurturing, generative, ushering you into the, da- the, the fruitful danger. No, but the protection that keeps you stuck almost keeps you repeating the same old, same old patterns. And these ones, they need to be really sure that you are ready. Yeah. Yeah, maybe here in the preparation phase, another element is a cultivation of the deep authenticity. Deep authenticity that comes together with social acceptance. So how to be socially accepted and and authentic. And you might say, oh, that's easy. Seems that is not. Seems like it, it seems easy, but it's not really easy. And authenticity just by itself is, it may, maybe it is easy to, to enact. Being a kind of a re- rebellious one, not really caring about others and not taking responsibility and honoring them. Of course, we can be just authentic. Or the other, the other one, we can, we can be socially accepted if we are conforming and if we are really attentive to what others expect from us and want from us. Then we are socially accepted and we are finding a place where we fit in. But to be both, It's quite an art and it takes time and diligence and it's beautiful as well. It's enchanting and rich. Yeah. So these are few of the ways that we are preparing ourselves for the descent, for the journey. Is it something that you resonate with? Is it... uh, are you like, oh yeah, I'm I'm doing that totally. For years now, I'm preparing. Great. Great. The more you prepare, the better you will be equipped to hear, to see into the dark, to touch, to grasp. Yeah, exactly. The more you prepare, the more you come closer to the rim of the canyon. Um, and as you walk towards the rim of the canyon and you're building this authentic and socially accepted, uh, successful, uh, in a way, self, um, um, then, um, yeah, I'm just, uh, as, you, as you do that, you are uh, cultivating your uh, early adolescent, healthy early adolescent identity healthy early adolescent, not the the eco soul centric adolescent identity, not the ego centric, the one who uh, lives by the little needs uh, and by um, consumering and and conforming. Um, And here I want to maybe just drop a few more ideas. Um, This one is a conscious choice. Preparation is a, is a conscious choice to work on our um, ident- on our skills, on our competences, on our wholeness. Uh, while when we speak later about soul, this is not a choice that we make. Uh, this is a choice uh, someone else, soul and spirit, may maybe make for us. But this one is a ch- conscious choice that I am preparing. I am uh, becoming uh, more. Um, more um, nurturing generative adult, more wild indigenous one, more healed and so on and so on. And if we uh, go back to the story of Jesus that we spoke about yesterday uh, in the in the first part of the workshop, then we can see this phase as the phase in which he was a successful carpenter uh, and acknowledged by his community. 
and that was the moment of uh, when when there is a reach in, in that stage of preparation uh, there is a sensation of easiness and there is a sensation of, of safety uh, and that if I keep going this way everything can be predictable and then there is a identity that is formed uh, let's say the identity of the carpenter uh, and the one who carpenters I, I hope I'm using the, the right verb in the community and then I love this uh, passage um, this moment in which uh, one arrives at the rim of the canyon uh, you know as a carpenter this is who I am I fully know it now and confirmation uh, which is the passage to the next phase um, <laughs> tricks us badly uh, because it uh, just destroys uh, everything that we have built so far as if we've built the perfect house uh, that we have worked on for months and years and now this one needs to be abandoned because we are looking at the uh, depths of the canyon and they're calling us they're calling us we're going to speak more about it in a while obviously but I just wanted to speak about this um, you know we build a perfect identity and then we're almost we're not we're almost we we are demanded to say goodbye yeah um, and just a, a last thought in the example of the caterpillar to butterfly well that's the caterpillar eating and growing and shedding skins and growing bigger and consuming and exploring and becoming uh, fat let's say and and uh, round so this is um, this is a little bit from my side about preparation and yet let's go on uh, let's go on to the next phase which is called dissolution uh, I, I love the word even the word is wonderful it just speaks so much dissolution i i was uh, reflecting on that and i and i was thinking this solution even sounds like the solution uh, the solution to today's uh, world problems is that we need um, adults so there is a need to cross that boundary uh, and, and do what? They dissolve. Uh, these become, um, descend, uh, fall into um, a crisis let the house behind that you've built and um, make it a free dive into the soul canyon here's a poem that um, maybe will uh, sparkle some more images around that by Raina Maria Rilke onto a vast plain You are not surprised at the force of the storm. You are not surprised at the force of the storm. You have seen it growing. The trees flee. Their flight sets the boulevard streaming. And you know him who they flee is the one you move towards he whom they flee is the one you move towards all your senses sing him as you stand at the wheel the weeks stood still in summer the weeks stood still in summer the tree's blood rose now you feel it wants to sink back into the source of everything you thought you could trust that power when you plucked the fruit. Now it becomes a riddle again, and you again, a stranger. Summer was like your house. You knew where each thing stood. 
Now you must go into your heart as onto a vast plain. Now the immense loneliness begins. The days go numb. The wind sucks the world from your senses like withered leaves. Through the empty branches the sky remains. It is what you have. The sky is what you have. Be earth now. Be earth now and even so. Be the ground lying under the sky. Be modest now, like a thing ripened until it is real, so that he who began it all can feel you when he reaches for you. Mm. Onto a vast plain by Raina Maria Rilke or uh, descending into the canyon. Yeah, so in the preparation phase, it, it, we, we were like in the summer, uh, we, we knew where each thing stood. But now, now there is a calling, there is a longing, there is a, um, an unknown desire um, to, to go further, to make life more meaningful, to find something beyond the socially secure and authentic self. And this, um, this longing, this calling is um, bringing, of course, fear. Uh, you're not surprised at the force of the storm. You have seen it growing, but yet there is fear. There is fear because a part of us inside knows that um, we are uh, dissolving. We are going into this liminal space, into this transitional period. Um, we are going into a cocoon, melting down, uh, becoming nothing, uh, feeling the death approaching, feeling uh, empty, feeling uh, naked, uh, again, um, lonely. Um, um, and, and the older identity uh, dissolves. There is a sensation of dismemberment. Uh, there is a, um, yeah, a shift in how we understand ourselves and the world. We are uh, about to be consumed or we are beginning to be consumed. Before we were consuming, now we're being consumed. And I, I love this um, idea that um, of the model of Bill Plotkin. We are being consumed. We're not consuming anything else on the way to the soul encounter, but we are being consumed. It's not about taking any uh, retreat or any, um, um, I don't know, um, food to, to have the revelation. It's about offering ourselves utterly to the mystery, to the soul, to the spirit, every, everything, uh, in order to be found. Mm. Yeah, and I'm just remembering your poems, quest, questions you were speaking. I've lost my butterfly wings and there, will I ever grow them? So these are kind of the questions that are uh, existing in this, uh, in this phase. Yeah, burning questions and quests. Hmm. Yeah, do you feel the allurement of this one and the fear? They hold hands, kind of. Something that we cannot say no. And if we say no, you know, it's um, like um, um, it will just keep coming. We can still uh, hold the uh, alarm, uh, the snooze, but uh, it will be still ringing. But this solution will be just around the corner. Hmm. So maybe a few more drops here. Elixir drops uh, here about a dissolution. Um, and you were speaking, Eleni, about um, the yeah hearing 
what what needs to be he uh, heard well here in the dissolution phase there's both a crisis and a calling a crisis and a calling and we should be resourced enough to embrace the crisis in such a way that we will hear the calling otherwise we would be completely taken by the crisis and we will not hear the calling we will not hear that deep questions that have no right to go away so there's both a crisis and you know it's a kind of a cliche the crisis any crisis any crisis is an opportunity indeed it is if we are equipped to go through it and to make it a jewel to make it to turn it into gold and to hear the calling that is underneath the crisis the call is from our soul obviously which is pulling us down which is to say it is a call from nature and psyche yeah can you can you relate to that maybe you have heard maybe maybe you are familiar at least you are familiar with crisis and how do we turn those crises into wisdom into medicine into elixir a deep maturity is needed a deep deep maturity wholeness capacity to see that because it is dangerous it's like have you seen the the drawing is like free fall free fall into the death into your own death the kind of death that leads to freedom the kind of death that leads to truth the kind of death that is rebirthing us recharging us ah this delicious death in and in the poem that eleni uh, was uh, reading was something like he whom they flee from you move to words maybe everybody else is is running away from death psycho spiritual death just to be very clear yeah we're not talking about the physical death the psycho spiritual the death of an old identity and he whom they flee from that maybe you are going to words you're you're saying yes to the, to it because you know what not everybody who departs reaches the bottom of the canyon it can be that you know there's the preparation there's a little bit of dissolution and oops back back into the the shore back into the safety and then again maybe we are trying but then we're not not all of us reach the the bottom of the canyon or even very far down yeah so it's a place in which it's kind of in a limbo you shed your old identity and you do not receive yet a new one for some time so you're in this nakedness and if you maybe you can recall the the story with jesus that we we said it yesterday in the first part of the online workshop that he was literally going through this river naked starting his quest of 40 days naked a vessel a vessel here the dissolution we are an empty vessel I know nothing about myself. Everything that I knew about myself, my life as a carpenter in Jesus' story, it's gone. Blank page or dark page, black page. And the more we're willing to risk resource, being resourced with wholeness, the deeper we are able to descend. Yeah. This is a little bit more flavor to the dissolution, to this free fall, <laughs> to this cliff journey. Sounds appealing, alluring. Yes? Yeah. I saw at least some, some of you. Yes, it is. It is appealing. Yeah, there's a desire. There's an innate desire for this kind of death. Yes, it's dangerous. It's risky. But it's an innate wish for that passionate 
a meaningful life to be lived. So it's absolutely normal to wish for this kind of death. Yeah. Okay. Shall we go on the bottom of the canyon? There, the very, the very end. Um, so let's go to the third phase of our journey of soul initiation. And it's called the soul encounter. Soul encounter. Um, and here's one part of a poem for uh, maybe speaking first about what this phase is all about, soul encounter. And the poem is called The Song of Wandering Angus by William East. And it goes like this. I went out to the hazel wood because a fire was in my head and cut and peeled a hazel wand and hooked a berry to a thread. And when white moth were on the wing and moth like stars were flickering out, I dropped the berry in a stream and caught a little silver trout. When I had laid it on the floor, I went to blow the fire aflame, but something rustled on the floor and someone called me by my name. It had become a glimmering girl with apple blossom in her hair who called me by my name and ran and faded through the brightening air. <sighs> I went out to the ha hazel wood because a fire was in my head. A fire in my head. Maybe this portion of the poem is uh, describing actually the dissolution. A fire is my head. It's a burning fire. It's a crisis. As well as a calling to fish or maybe to be fished. I don't know if this word exists but to be caught, rather to, to caught, to catch. And then, and then the second stanza actually is talking about the soul encounter. I, when I had laid it on the floor and I went to blow the fire of flame, but something rustled on the floor and someone called me by my name. It had become, it transformed this little silver trout. It transformed into a glimmering girl with apple blossom in her hair who called me by my name and ran and faded through the brightening air. She didn't say much, but she did call him by his name. Didn't give a lot of instructions of how to embody this name in the world, but he heard his name. This is a bit of the felt sense image, I don't know, sensation of soul encounter phase. Yeah, we really become here, here we are really utterly an empty vessel and here is the place of encounter is the place of discovery of something unique about us what is ours to be and what is ours to do in the world utterly ours uniquely ours so this is a conscious encounter which comes from the subconscious. <laughs> it's when the subconscious is, I finally, after so much preparation and dying and all of that, finally we have a glimpse, a girl who is calling us by our true name, a glimpse of it. That And, and that calling changes everything. That radically shifts our experience of who we are of our world, of our possibilities. 
it is what happens only when we are reaching the depths. That's why it is on the bottom of the canyon. Namely, visions and, and revelations of our unique ecological niche are being offered. And we are feeling somehow that we are part of the greater web of life. Hmm. And this comes in a way both as an ecstatic, utter truth, a blessing, we could say, as well as a burden, uh, um, a heavy responsibility. And we feel, we feel the consequences if not doing the work. We feel the consequences of not doing not embodying that true name that the girl, meaning soul, whispered us when we were in the hazel woods, maybe perhaps. And this whisper, this image maybe, this bodily sensation can be revealed um, in, in many ways, in many places, out in the in the nature, it can be revealed, or it can be revealed or touched or heard while we are engaged in different soul craft practices that are sparkling and are inviting this encounter with soul. Maybe through dream work, maybe through deep imagination journeys maybe through ceremonies in collective ceremonies or self-design individual ceremonies or in embodied um, practices, trans dance or any other kind of body embodiment uh, practices or in the art of solitude, in, uh, in the story with Jesus, right? His uh, his choosing well he's choosing or or rather said the the calling the torment chose for him to go into the desert into the solitude into nature empty bellied without eating fasting questing asking for a vision for the vision engaging with uh, i don't know i want to say the art of dying the art, the art of, of really saying goodbye so that we can have the space to say hello and welcome. Grief work. There's so many practices that can usher the soul encounter. And what does the soul encounter actually reveal? Maybe, well, we have mentioned so many times already, but Nevertheless, we are mentioning again, it reveals your ecological, ecological contribution, the place, the ultimate truth. In a maybe in a poetic language, in a not so cognitively understood kind of way. And it's in that moment, in that moment, you when you are called by your true name, it is profoundly moving. That particular moment is profoundly touching. It's sacred. It's like you cannot really say it in a in a restaurant over over a beer. It it it's it takes everything of you to re relive that. And it's it's so precious. The preciousness, the preciousness that holds the truth that oh yeah, something something is an utter truth about myself is being revealed, is being uh, um expressed by by the nature by by soul itself together with spirit yeah the preciousness of the truth and the preciousness that is somehow that is mysterious it's profound but it's not crystal clear and it's both this this paradox of ecstatic but also fearful And maybe one more um, flavor to the soul encounter, to the moment, is that you have a profound understanding and knowing that the embodiment of it 
will change not only you, but the whole world. And when I say the whole world, it's of course your community, but who knows, maybe the whole world. Jesus didn't know when he was there all alone for 40 days and 40 nights in the, in the desert that he would inspire and change the whole world in, in a way or another. Yeah, so maybe I, I have a put a pause here, and I'm inviting Eleni to maybe weave more and add more to to this beauty. Mm. Oh yes, it is a beauty. We can speak for hours about this. I have the feeling. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, everything will be utterly changed. Everything will not be the same from this point on. Uh, and this revelation, as much as it comes with feeling blessed and responsible, it also comes with a sense of grief. Uh, a grief for all the time we didn't know about this. Um, because we were gifted with this, you know, from the very first moment we arrived in this world. And yet uh, it took us maybe 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years to come to this uh, conscious knowing that I am gifted with a soul, uh, with this particular way of being in the world. So there is a, a sense of grief, and then there, and then there is a sense of hope at the same time that, oh, I I now can see the way of utterly belonging in this world, and I can see the way uh, I can utterly contribute and be in service in this world. So in that uh, harshly noticed moment quoting now another poem in which you move from that world to this world. Uh, there is a small opening um, in which uh, we feel all this uh, altered state of consciousness because soul encountered is an altered state of consciousness. It's not everyday uh, kind of consciousness. Something is shifting uh, drastically. Uh, and there is a sensation of what? Wow? Uh, really? A and then, not long uh, after, our little ones, the personalities and protectors, are coming in uh, to to tell us, no, it's maybe this is your imagination. Right? It's not true. Uh, this is uh, they. They want to challenge us. They want to doubt what we have just had because it doesn't make sense with the mind. It cannot be explained. Um, it is uh, something beyond. It's really spiritual. Uh, it's a, a spiritual journey. Uh, so they they are finding their way to um, uh, to doubt and and let us forget what we've just or push away what we've just encountered. Um, and that's why in the preparation phase, um, wholeness and working with the subpersonalities is really, really needed. Um, uh, because the subpersonalities will come uh, at the soul encounter. Uh, and the wholeness, the ego needs to be strong enough to say, no, this is actually who I'm meant to be. I, I feel goosebumps now. This is actually who I am. This is the deepest way of being authentic in the world. And I hear you, little one, who says this is not true and this is not that. But um, um, I'm, I'm open to what has happened, to what, to what I have been gifted. And I love this word. It's a, we have been gifted. It's not a choice now. Uh, it's, a, it's a gift we receive. So, yeah, maybe that's um, about the soul encounter. It's kind of remembering, really. It's kind of remembering what we forgot. And sounds delicious. What do you think? 
Yeah, sounds delicious. Only if, mm. only when, not only if, only when, only when we get there. Yeah. So let's um, move on. What happens after soul encounter? Um, and as we're crossing um, to the next phase uh, of metamorphosis, we want to offer another poem. Uh, this one is also by Rumi, and it's called Don't Go Back to Sleep. Hmm? Already the title reveals a lot, right, about the, <laughs> what can happen in the metamorphosis. Don't go back to sleep. The breeze at dawn has secrets to tell you. Don't go back to sleep. You must ask for what you really want. You must ask for what you really want. Don't go back to sleep. People are crossing back and forth across the door sill where the two worlds meet. The door is round and open. Don't go back to sleep. You must ask for what you really want. Don't go back to sleep. People are going back and forth across the door sill where the two worlds uh, touch. The door is round and open. Don't go back to sleep. So there is this door just where the two worlds meet, the soul world and the, and the middle world. Uh, and there is a door that is round and open. Um, and is uh, inviting us on an ascent now, climbing up the, on the other side of the canyon, knowing that the one who is uh, climbing up is not the same as the one who dived down. Uh, knowing that even the word of this stay, of this phase, metam metamorphosis, means um, change of shape, the new shape. So this one is a new shape. It's a Greek word. It's the new phase, new shape, the the sh the change of shape. So this one, um, this is uh, um, this is where we should not go back to sleep. This is where uh, our subpersonalities should uh, be embraced by our wholeness, and our ego should. Uh, develop and expand in such a way uh, that actually um, gets in a sacred marriage with the soul. Uh, the soul cannot be forgotten. Um, uh, and, and therefore, the ego firstly needs to enlarge and be cultivated further uh, so, so that um, can hold the, the responsibility that comes with this uh, soul uh, name, soul image, soul sensation. Um, the, um, there is maybe a, uh, how can I say that? Let me see. Sometimes we think that well, when we get to the soul encounter, we will know everything. No. <laughs> when we get to the soul encounter, we're like, uh, we, um, well, I, 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 that, was, that was my, my personal experience. I knew less things about me than before. Uh, I had more questions about me than before. And, uh, and the biggest question probably is how? How is this name, is this sensation, is this soul uh, translated into the into the middle world? How is this uh, gifted 
to the others how can i work with that how can i be that how can i embody that and now there is a whole new set of burning questions going back to lolo's poem walk through the questions as if you walk in the fire i love how we quote now uh, this poet here mm, yeah so there is also this uh how and this is uh um a burden and and yet the soul image keeps us going hopefully and and metamorphosis uh takes time uh everybody everything takes time but the metamorphosis should take um or it's time organically we shouldn't hurry and yet we shouldn't delay so metamorphosis requires work uh, requires uh, work and effort and uh, being in, in 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 an ongoing conversation with the soul. Uh, um, soul discovery is not the end; it's just the beginning. Soul discovery. I'm just going to repeat it. Soul discovery is not the end; it's only the beginning. Uh, and sometimes the the way uh, of returning is is longer than the way of uh, getting there. So metamorphosis is this bridge between the vision and actually offering it. Uh, and it takes, uh, it takes time. Um, as if we, we think of the cocoon um, and, and, and where the the caterpillar has dissolved completely and has become a soup. And, and then with the soul encounter, the imaginal cells of uh, the butterfly are activated. And then the butterfly is becoming, it's, it's becoming um, real. It's on, its, on her becoming, on its becoming. And yet the cocoon should not be opened until the butterfly is fully ready. And yet the cocoon should not be open uh, much later than the butterfly is, is ready. Because what will happen to the butterfly um, if, it up, if it opens too soon or if it uh, opens too late? I'm taking a breath here. Let's, uh, let's all take a breath here. Maybe the metamorphosis is requiring a bit of a bit of waiting. Active, it's an active, it's an active patience. I think Bill Plotkin says that we need to be patient, but we need to be active, uh, actively patient, meaning that we also need to work um, to work on our wholeness. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, Sandra, you may continue. So I'm taking this thread that you just uh, spoke about. We have to work on our wholeness. The work of wholeness actually is never, it's a never ending journey. It's not only in the preparation that we need to work on the wholeness. Mm, we need to work on wholeness in all the phases and in all the ways because imagine the the enormous uh, image that we were gifted and, and burdened with, well, that image needs um, a solid ego, a solid foundation, a solid, well, not only foundation, but a solid building of, uh, of uh, wholeness to be delivered, to be offered to the world. Yes. So, yeah, we, are, we have already established that in this place, in the metamorphosis, uh, the ego is reshaped. So the one who is taking the decisions now is soul, is that particular image, that particular name, the true name. Um, and uh, soul needs a willing and able enough partner to be capable to say yes to all these possibilities. Uh, so it's almost like we are 
creating and we are we are deepening a new kind of relationship with ourselves we we are changing the way we are talking to ourselves it's not anymore just the cognitive result oriented objectives kind of way of uh, being thinking but is is soul is muse is inner beloved is poetry it's speaking things that maybe others are not understanding and risking that risking that now maybe now that i'm saying risk maybe it's worth saying that metamorphosis is another place of crisis it's another place of deep crisis the crisis of uh, of reshaping ego like i'm i'm imagining that the reshaping process it's not a sweet and easy and um flowing one it can be at some t- at times but it, it's also maybe ego is like no that's too much no you're going to be called crazy no that's forbidden in our society you know that the ego will be no no let's let's have some quiet let's go just enjoy and and be delighted by this world why do we have to to love it in such a way so ego needs to be courted needs to be enchanted and um, taken by its hand yeah eleni was mentioning about the marriage yeah it's a kind of a sacred union and they both has have to say yes <laughs> otherwise it's not a sacred union it's not a union otherwise so in other words we are invited to making ourselves vulnerable to the impressions of others and we have to have a healthy mature ego to to deal with the consequences because the consequences could be welcoming uh the community can welcome you or they can be frightened and scared and threatened by your witchiness by your lightness by your art in any way who knows going back to the story of jesus some benefited from his metamorphosis he he started to teach he started to preach he started to heal and some were were benefiting and some were were recognizing him as as this one that guides people to transformation and divine and some were threatened some were like who is this yeah this one that is challenging the status quo hmm Mm -hmm. are you feeling in your cells in your blood in your bones this is the place where metamorphosis take place there inside in the bone in the blood in the cells and maybe just one more one last idea here in the metamorphosis is that maybe a good question to wake up with just you know to wake up from the long night where you are really paying attention to the dreams but then you wake up and maybe a question to ask yourself is what can i do today to get a little bit even closer to my soul image to my soul poetry line what is the threshold that i need to cross today so that i might express myself as this person as this creature, as this archetype of mine, as this god and goddess, because we are all gods and goddesses, not only Jesus. But what is that? Is it a conversation? Is it the way I speak? Is it the way I breathe? Is it the way I walk? Is it something that I will offer? to my community is it something a conversation with one of my parents what is something that will usher me closer to this image yes metamorphosis okay feel it imagine it maybe lived it and maybe you are living it (laughs) shall we go to the other side 
because now we're still in the crisis, in the climbing, in the whew, shaping, reshaping. So let's go on the other side. What was the poem? Dare to be scared because the scariness will usher you to the other side. Something like that. I'm paraphrasing, paraphrasing one of our poems, right? So let's go on the other side. And the last phase is the enactment. And Eleni said yeah, uh, on the previous phase that soul, soul encounter or, yeah, I think you said about soul encounter, it's not where everything uh, ends is where everything begins well here this enactment is actually not where everything ends but where everything begins damn it we thought that we are done huh and we are just we are just starting i mean the enactment is is the art making the art the individual art available but let's hear a poem first a poem that speaks about enactment. And the poem is called Cargo by Greg Kimura. And maybe you also know some of these poems. I, I know for sure that some of you know some of these poems. And now you can even have a deeper understanding that why we have chosen this particular poem for this particular phase or this particular poem for soul or spirit or whatever. It's just another lens, another, another, yeah, another lenses uh, to feel into the poems. So anyway, Cargo by Greg Kimura. You, you enter life, a ship laden with meaning, purpose, and gifts, sent to be delivered to a hungry world. And as much as the world needs your cargo, you need to give it away. Everything depends on this. But the world forgets its needs and you forget your mission. And the ancestral maps used to guide you have become faded scrolls on the parchment of dead ferns. The cargo weights you heavy the longer it is held and spoilage becomes a risk. The ship sputters from port to port and at each you ask, is this the way? Is this the way? But the way cannot be found without knowing the cargo and the cargo cannot be known without recognizing there is a way. And it's simply this. You have gifts. The world needs your gifts. You must deliver them. The world may not know it is starving, but the hungry know, and they will find you when you discover your cargo and start to give it away. Yeah. Yeah, this poem speaks about the, the world which is hungry, hungry for you. Hungry for your soul. For your unique way to make beauty. To create love. And death. And whatever you're meant to create in the world. Hmm. Hmm. I'm picking at your messages here, although I'm trying not to. But it, they're yummy, and they're in resonance with why I what I feel. Goosebumps, indeed. So you enter life, a sheep laden with meaning, purpose, and gifts. Greg Kimura says, meaning that maybe something like we are conceived by mystery, by spirit, as something treasurable, meaningful, marvelous like a singular poem or, or song or rhythm or dance. One that our world needs in order to complete its symphony, as if the world is a symphony, which it is. So the enactment 
is when we learn diligently, we learn how to embody our soul image in uh, acts of service for our community. It's something like you perform your vision for your people to benefit from. And of course, you're also having kind of ecstatic um, delights. And you might use this delight word quite, quite often when doing your work. <laughs> so here in the enactment, we're no longer wondering about what is our meaning? What is the meaning of our life? We know that we are belonging deeply to ourselves through the image that soul gifted us with. And we belong to the community, to our community and to earth community, to the deeper web of life. And I think I wanna read what Bill Plotkin refers to what a true adult is, because we were speaking about adults and, and that this, the journey of soul initiation is, is ushering us and the result is true adults, visionary leaders, artisans of cultural transformation and revolution makers. So, yeah, I'm, I'm reading from the journey of soul initiation itself. So he writes here, what do I mean by a true adult? Someone who knows why they were born, who knows who they are as a unique individual participant in the web of life and who creatively occupies their distinctive eco niche in their everyday life as a gift to their people and the greater earth community. And he goes on just a little bit more. Someone who experiences themselves first and foremost as a member of the earth community and has had one or more revelatory experiences of their unique place in that ecological community and embodies that unique place as a gift to their people and the earth community. And doing so, makes them a visionary agent of evolution, an agent of revolution. Quite a definition of what a true adult is. And again, I'm pointing out something obvious. Adult here does, we don't refer to the age, but the rule, but, but about about actually we refer to the journey of soul initiation. A true adult has been traveling down there the canyon and is returning completely different and gifted. And maybe you have um, kind of grasped that a true adult has one or more encounters, one or more encounters. So we can travel this soul canyon more than one time we we travel one and once and we are kind of taking these phases one by one preparation dissolution soul encounter metamorphosis enactment and then and then we can be in maybe several places and we can be gifted with multiple soul encounters that just ushers us just deeper and deeper on the bottom of the on the bottom of the canyon. Our unique ecological niche is not changing. That is something that we are born with, but the ways, the mythopoetic identity, the ways we are embodying our soul is changing and is developing. Because we can choose some ways, well, Bill Plotkin calls them delivery systems, some ways of, of offering this soul to our community. It can be, we can be poets, we can be architects, we can be guides, we can be dancers, and so on and so on. So these are different ways of embodying that center image, that center golden truth. 
and uh, the life itself is a forever journey. And once that we travel through this canyon, we will return. There's always more preparation. There's maybe life circumstances that ushers us into a, a deep dissolution yet again. There's the juice and the gift of the another soul encounter and so on. And then with the soul encounter, it must be, it must be a metamorphosis that is going on there. Does it make sense to your soul and heart? Maybe to your mind and brain, it's a little bit, oh, wow, it's complex. And it is very complex. And at the same time, it's quite simple. You prepare, you die, and you, you're deeply rebirthed. <laughs> okay. I, I see enactment as the place where finally the how, the question how, has answers. Um, and these answers is, is the delivery systems. And again, um, I want to just underline that it's not about the work we do for making a living, because maybe we still have the work we do for you know uh, making a living and financial security and raising our children and and so on but the, the maybe we enact so in a very different way and uh, this is the part that soul um, stays as a gift to the world the same forever uh, if you go back to the story yesterday of Jesus, we spoke about how the legacy of his soul um, was, uh, well, st is still felt by, by us today. And uh, similarly, we might feel the legacy of other embodied souls just uh, by maybe walking in the forest or being in the street or just being here, right here. And we would feel that. We do have the legacy of so many poets uh, that we, we, we refer to. Uh, and yeah, I, I lost my thread a little bit, but I, I hope you, you follow <laughs> my, lost, my lost thread here. Um, and I just want to add um, maybe just uh, one thing. I think if we reach that place, we kind of know how to move on. And uh, I just want to um, give Bill Plotkin's example, who said that, um, I, I hope I, I recall it correctly, that um, he had his first soul encounter at some age, at some certain age, and then 20 years later, he, all these uh, models that we're now talking about have reached him as delivery systems. So that, that's quite a lot, you know, 20 years, but yet it's worth the waiting because look at these uh, pearls in the world and these impossible possibilities for transformation. Uh, personal and and social and cultural and uh, you know the whole earth holds now this possibility by um, he's waiting until the models have uh, have reached him. his delivery systems are crafted in such a way um, so I just I just wanted to share that how we taste now the gifts uh, of somebody whose, whose soul has been enacted. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we are getting there. Hopefully more and more hundreds and thousands of people are getting there and hopefully the whole earth is, is, that, is vibrating that kind of enactment. Then, then, um, then it would be a different story. And this is what we're, I think this is what motivates us and brings us hope. And this vision, this possibility is what keeps me at least here doing what I'm doing. Probably, probably is what brings you here today. 
<sighs> well, wow. Once more, wow. I kind of uh, feel called to uh, maybe a minute with ourselves, maybe a minute with a notebook again, um, just to put down, I don't know, keywords, or just let everything sink or acknowledge what is what is there, what is what has happened, what you have uh, just um, welcomed inside of you. So one minute with the notebook. Make sure you put the final most important words down on your notebook. This is not the end, it's only the beginning. Where will these um, words take you and this poetry with which we started with, you started with, dear poets and poetesses? Only mystery knows, only, only spirit knows, and perhaps the conspiracy, uh, conspiracy between the soul, your soul and, and the spirit. And as we have been spiraling up and down, accessing innate resources, uh, being uh, in the skies and in the wombs of the earth, um, let us not go back to sleep. Now this poem for this, uh, whatever has awakened now within you, let us not go back to sleep. Let us remember. Let us stay here. Let's continue the thread. And let's um, mindfully, uh, mindfully and humbly return to the candle uh, who has been accompanying us all the time burning air listening to your untold stories that are stirring in your breasts and the seeds waiting within you so let us breathe in all together and blow the candle in gratitude Deep gratitude, dear ones, for being with us today again. What an active patient you had um, with, uh, with us today. Um, thank you. Thank mm. you for choosing to be here. Thank you for choosing to be part of this. Thank you for uh, making your steps towards the soul journey just by being here or just by being frightened of that. It's mm. all, all um, steps towards that. Thank you. I am deeply honored. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm echoing Eleni's words and maybe the words of one of our poems, let everything happen to you, beauty and terror. Just keep going. Keep going, finding soul and finding spirit and being shaped and informed and delighted by their love and by their gifts. My way of saying appreciations for being here, still here. I love that. Thank you. And I just, I just cannot uh, avoid saying that, although I know we are a bit over the time, but I can, I cannot avoid saying that. Um, <clears throat> um, when we were planning this with Sandra, we thought, oh, maybe we have too many poems uh, for you today, but seems like 
<laughs> you wanted more poems and you were ready for more, po more poems and uh, you are uh, you are the one who the ones who feast on poetry uh, and your own poetry so seems like soul and spirit uh, did their own work and mm -hmm. we are just as uh, servants of these ones and yeah. perhaps you are a living poem yourself mm -hmm. and maybe i will drop the perhaps you are yes. a living poem yourself Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.